In this short video, we will be looking at the conservation of an oil on canvas laid down onto hardboard. Titled The Beach at Seat in Karoo, and now held in the collection of Hartlepool Art Gallery, it was painted during the mid-1950s by the artist Margaret Green. Born in West Hartlepool in 1925, Margaret initially studied at the local art college before attending the Royal College of Art, where she won several prized awards for her work. From the late 1940s, she exhibited at the Leicester Galleries London and elsewhere in the UK and abroad. Her paintings have been acquired by several prestigious public collections and Hartlepool Art Gallery owned two of her finest works. When the painting arrived at the Conservation Studio, it was examined to assess its general condition before removing it from its frame. Here you can see the reverse of the painting with its simple wooden framework and hardboard support. Displayed behind picture glass, the painting was in direct contact with the glass, which could cause the paint to become stuck to the underside and make it difficult to separate both the glass and the painting without causing damage. Initial tests showed that the painting and glass had not become stuck together and the glass was carefully removed from the painting. On removal, it was found that a bloomed, frosted impression of the painting remained on the glass. The areas of bloom coincided with the darker passages of the painting, which had over time become quite matte, compared with the lighter areas which remained shiny. In general, the darker, more granular pigments, such as the black and earth pigments, tend to require more oil in the mixture when the artist is creating a usable paint. And in these details, you can clearly see the shinier, lighter coloured areas and the matter, darker areas. And it is likely that in this painting, the excess oil and volatile components of the paint mix have to some extent transferred to the glass surface, causing this unusual ghost-like image. Once the glass was removed, the paint surface could be seen more clearly. When viewed in a strong raking light, it was possible to see the extent of the structural problems. And here you can see the sharp edges of raised paint where the oil paint has become unstable and detached from the ground layer beneath, with several small areas of lost paint, the result of flaking. It was decided to attempt to reattach the areas of lifting paint using a weak gelatin solution, which was injected between the paint and the ground layer. The gelatin provides a weak sticky consolidant which would hopefully reactivate the original gelatin or size in the ground layer and help to allow the paint to be relaxed back to its original position. This was achieved using a combination of localised heat and light pressure. In areas where it was not possible to inject with gelatin, a wax resin consolidant was used. When heated with a spatula, the wax filters through the cracks in the painting, securing the paint. When the paint had been secured, the surface dirt was removed using cotton wool swabs and a weak reagent. When the painting was considered to be stable, it was placed face down and the reverse was cleaned using a vacuum cleaner and a brush to dislodge dust and dirt. Once the structural work and cleaning was complete, a new thin layer of picture varnish was applied by a brush. This would act as an isolating layer between the painting and the small areas of filling and retouching which were then to be applied. The small losses were filled with a smooth gesso-like filling material, making sure that the fillings extended only within the areas of loss and not onto the original paint. When dry, the fillings were carved with dental tools to imitate the surrounding original paint brush marks. Fillings and other small damages were retouched using a small sable hairbrush and paint mixed on the palette. This was made from raw pigments and picture varnish. The varnish medium used in this type of paint is designed to match the look of an aged paint film, whereas if the painting had been retouched using traditional oil paints, the retouchings would soon discolour and become visible to the viewer. After the retouchings were applied, the painting was given a final spray of a studio-made semi matte picture varnish. The painting is now ready to be returned to its home at Hartlepool Art Gallery, where it can soon be enjoyed and appreciated by generations to come.